Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. My name is Hijab Hassan and I welcome you all to yet another enlightening episode of the Systems Dialogue. Thank you for tuning in. As you've watched before, Systems Dialogue is a platform that we've created to put forward content pertinent to digitally enabled enterprises. In our previous episodes like you watched, we spoke about metaverse, we had speakers talking about digital infrastructure security, cloud computing and all those areas that you would want to know about. With me here I have Babar Usmani who is the head of design transformation and strategy at Systems Limited. Over to you Babar. Thank you so much for having me uh, Hijab and uh, uh, welcome you to our studio 77. Glad to be here. So Babar tell us about simplify design thinking for us. What is design thinking? How did this uh, concept become popular and what value can businesses generate from implementing this process into their um, you know strategy? In an essence mm -hmm. design thinking focuses on empathy. Now empathy is like the cornerstone of design thinking. You you're designing anything let's say you're designing experiences you're designing uh, anything for your internal uh, employees or you're designing something for let's say uh, patients in healthcare design thinking can be used for literally anything it's a problem solving methodology mm. and more than that it's a mindset it's a mindset that really focuses on creativity on nurturing innovation and getting uh, diverse perspectives from from different uh, from different angles and point of views So in a nutshell it it's it's focused on the customer and it really deep dives on the customer's environment so we do those kind of user researches where we go into the field uh and we actually observe that the customers we observe different users that are using our products and we reflect on that we come back we reflect on that and then we start making that stuff in our previous conversation when we were planning this entire session out you spoke about nike you spoke about apple would you like to share to the um, viewers here how have they implemented design thinking into their products if if i were to ask you i mean when we pick any uh, any sneaker or any apparel let's say if, uh, any sportswear mm. we've got a myriads of uh, you know options we've got several uh, options uh, that we can choose from but why is it that nike has built that kind of uh, uh, a huge fan base i mean they they don't even call their customers customers they they they're like yeah. it's it's a complete fan fan base of of nike It, yeah. and similarly i mean for apple as well because everything is so detailed everything is designed the entire customer journey the entire customer experience is designed to the pinpoint accuracy and that can only happen if you're very close to your customers if you're listening to them if you're if you're being with them if your teams are literally out there in in the markets and they're understanding from what what the pain points are or mm. where the challenges are for the customers and nike and apple have absolutely revolutionized customer centricity i mean we've heard uh, Uh, Steve Jobs several times saying that you know you don't start from the back end or you don't start from the technology you start from the from the customer you you need to understand what the customer's aspirations are yeah. what their motives are behind purchasing something there's a concept called jobs to be done which in set essentially means why is the customer hiring your company or any company to do a certain job Let's say if Nike is, is But Babu what I'm trying to understand here is and I'm sure our viewers are also curious what is the process of achieving that end state how do you get there Look the first thing is we uh embed ourselves in the environment of the, of the customers okay. so whoever we are designing something for we embed ourselves in the environment of our clients customers so the first thing that happens is the user research So That's here I would like to uh, interject. So you you've said something very interesting here. You've not said clients. You've said clients customers. Exactly. So this is something that I would want you to you know explain further that what is the difference between clients and clients customers here? The reason why we 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 see products which don't you know fascinate us or we don't buy those products is because sometimes these large corporations are building these products from their boardrooms. Right. And they're apps completely detached from what's happening in the actual mm. markets, mm. what's happening in the actual of, uh, you know, uh the the ground where where the the customers are hanging about. 
and usually those kind of things are are outsourced to a third party you know marketing agency which does that research brings it back to these executives they then you know focus on what needs to be done from their perspective mm. uh whereas what we inculcate and this is again we we have to you know do this kind of a change bring that change in in the minds of our clients that you have to focus on your customers right and that can only happen if the top leadership and if the entire organization works with us and we we co-create we we uh, join hands together and we actually study the customer where they they actually are there's a very famous person by the name of martin minstrom and he's a brand he's the he's a guru in terms of building brands what he does is he has traveled to i think at least 150 or uh, more than 100 countries the only thing that the only thing that he does is he goes to these different countries and he observes customers right and he brings in that insights and he shares with all these big mnc's mm. big multinational companies uh, that that we talk about so the idea is to focus on our clients customers so as a process the first step is to embed yourself into their day to day absolutely so what we do is we do, we do those uh, field uh, research we we uh, go into the market uh, we bring in the users mm. uh, we bring in bring in our clients users in in our design studios we do the, those usability uh, test with with the uh, with the users so again we touch on all all of those fronts the digital front and also the physical front so if we are solving for let's say digital we have to ensure that we are also there in the physical outlets of of our customers because that's where the cust- most mm. of the customers are and we need to bring those those customers to the digital front um, right so the idea is to embed ourselves in the uh, environment of the customers mm. uh, by by being in the market and also bringing bringing the customers in focus groups in doing these usability sessions with them we give them different scenarios we understand from them wh- what their challenges are what their pain points are and we give them different you know things to do in in our user little lab here in uh, studio 77 so baba would it be correct to state that in essentially when you are going through this process you are emulating a startup for example because startups are lean they're agile and um, contrary to large corporation startups from everyone in a startup from the ceo to you know ground to to an executive they embed themselves into the needs and problems of the end users absolutely I me mean, when i spoke about what design thinking is all about it's a mindset mm. it's a methodology yeah but what it really does is it's a mindset so the mindset is like i mean anything that needs to happen any change that needs to happen has to happen through the culture right we we have we've heard the fa- of the famous quote of peter drucker culture eats strategy for breakfast <laughs> you know there's there's an addition now culture eats strategy strategy for breakfast means that you know you might build a great strategy for your company but if your culture is not going to back up that strategy that strategy is going to fall flat on 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 your on, on the ground there's an addition to that so culture eats strategy for breakfast uh eats transformation for for uh lunch and eats innovation at dinner so whenever we talk about transformation we miss out on the point that it has to happen with the culture part the the transformation any digital transformation cannot happen if there is no cultural tra- transformation and if the the if the culture is not conducive for co-creation for collaboration for you know for doing experimentation because again when you are building something disruptive there will be mistakes right so the most important important aspect is psychological safety is my are my is my team empowered enough to take the decisions right if they're designing for something are they empowered to take decisions and those decisions can be can go you know 100% wrong as well yeah. so are they safe in mm. creating those 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 uh, solutions now if the if and that can only happen through culture right because we need to empower we need to give them confidence uh there's a really good book on uh, design where they talk about creative creative confidence everyone is you know uh, filled with creativity everyone has those 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 
creative touches uh, to, to, the, to themselves. But it's only when the leadership uh, focuses on creative uh, confidence, which is something which Steve Jobs did uh, when he was at Apple. Uh, I was reading a really good uh, anecdote about Steve Jobs. And again, we've all read so many mm. anecdotes about Steve, Steve Jobs. Um, but this one really struck me. And uh, this was when uh, Steve Jobs was ousted from his, you know, CEO role and he was out of Apple. Um, the same designer who was creating some really good products under Steve started creating, you know, not so great products like, I mean, there were so many failures uh, of Apple while Steve Jobs was away. But the same designer, when Steve Jobs came back, created, he, number one, elevated that person to a chief design officer role. Uh, and his name was Johnny Ive. Now, Johnny Ive created some really crappy products, but then when Steve Jobs joined, he, he designed, you know, the iPhone that, that we use right now. Even with uh, Pepsi, we saw how they introduced an entire line of, you know, healthy products. And yes. that was very new for a brand that was essentially known for uh, junk abs food. Absolutely. So Indra Nui, when, when she took over uh, the reins at PepsiCo, she is the most hailed CEO of uh, PepsiCo yeah. in the history of PepsiCo right now. I think she's done like a decade in, in the company. No other CEO uh, has done uh, those those many years in the yeah. company. And she popularized healthy lifestyle and sustainability Abs within the company as Absolutely. well. Which was a very novel concept back then. 100%. So what sparked the change? Uh, what the way again the i was reading her book actually and this reminds me that um how she she wrote that what inspired this was the fact that her children were con not consuming healthy breakfast <laughs> and she realized that if they are not you know con into healthy breakfast how will I, my audience or my client so the end user would be inclined towards if i am not you know uh, facilitating that for my children so that led to her, you know, innovating and thinking about this further. So the first thing that she did, she when she, when she took uh, the CEO role, uh, she, you know, invited her entire C-suite and um, they were sitting in the boardroom and she said, I want every one of you. And, and these are all the CXOs of PepsiCo. Yeah. I mean, the global uh, uh, CXOs of PepsiCo. The first thing that she asked those C CXOs was, I want you to go do a homework, take a diary, go to the nearest outlet of uh, yeah. retail outlet or supermarket. And I want you to just observe what the customers are doing when you see them in the retail environment mm. and you see them sell, you see those customers in, in a supermarket perhaps. So that's the kind of focus that the, the leadership can have on driving this chain and transformation. Mm. And guess what? Nobody came up with, with those, those uh, you know, insights about the diaries. I mean, not even 20% of them did it. So that was something which she uh, inculcated in, in the organization. Mm. And that was the, the spark that ignited the so entire fire. So not thinking from a profitability mindset, but from the standpoint of solving a problem that exists within the social fabric. And the first thing that she, one of the, another step that she took, which was very important, which had never been done before in the FMCG sector. She hired a chief design officer. Mm -hmm. Now this guy, Mauro Porcini is a hailed, you know, industry veteran when it comes to design. And uh, that person sparked the change in the company. So she gave the, she gave design a, a leadership position, mm. a, a chair in the boardroom, yeah. you know. So she really elevated the the part of focusing on the customer and focusing on the customer experience. That was tantamount. I mean, it for, for Indra Nui, it was super important that the whole organization should, you know, focus on, on the customer. And that's when these, I mean, you, you spoke about sustainability and healthy products. That's when they came up with, with, it, with, with this, uh, complete radical change uh, things which we haven't seen in in uh, in coca-cola right now but they moved on to you know quacker they acquired quacker roads they went yeah. on an acquisition spree tropicana, uh, tropicana well. i mean so when they they focused on juices they focused on cereals they focused yeah. on all of the healthy items how yeah. design thinking can actually transform the company and uh, 
we've seen the the outcomes uh, and there's a by the by the way there's a research uh, that McKinsey did about uh, those design driven companies um, and how they perform you know at the end of the day and they they tracked like 1700 companies um, and they were like it, it was a whole methodology that that they were fo focused on but the the result of that research was the outcome was that design driven companies outperform their peers right at least twice both in terms of revenue and also shareholder value as well so we've seen i mean what pepsi did uh, under indra noi uh, i mean their their stock prices you know yeah. they, they went uh, through the roof and again there's another example of another indian by the way in uh, microsoft so when satya nadella took over uh, the first thing that he did was i mean guess what he galvanized the entire com company okay and the first thing they did was to focus on the mission so he redefined the mission he writes in his book it's, it's an amazing book hit refresh uh where he uh crowdsourced in the company i mean 100000 employees plus you know and they all had to give their uh mission statements hmm. so it was a huge exercise which went for 7 months what was the crux of it they were redefining the mission of the company because he was the third person to lead microsoft and obviously microsoft had troubles uh, when when he was brought in and uh, the first thing that he did was he he empathized with with the with with, with his uh, employees he empathized with his customers he employees he empathized with his shareholders all of the stakeholders and he came up with this great concept called growth uh, growth mindset so from from being and the tagline which 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 goes like and, and lots of uh, literature is out there on how growth mindset transformed uh, uh, microsoft but again it's essentially focused on you know getting away from knowing it all to learning it all mm. so it's not about what you know as mm -hmm. a person the what uh, knowledge you have what insights you have it's about if microsoft has to go from x to y they need to grow now so everyone has to get out of their comfort zone and and start learning right. everyone has to start making mistakes and that learning process shouldn't should never you know stall um so again i mean coming back to your point it's it's all focused on on culture um and uh, design thinking is a great mindset it's a great tool that the organizations can use to you know drive transformation and drive uh, growth as well um so baba these are some very very interesting examples that we will also link in the comment section so that all our viewers can go back and you know gain from these case studies but what essentially is a design driven culture in any organization how can you achieve that so that is something that i'm sure that you have a lot to talk about <laughs> yeah, we've touched upon that already <clears throat> uh, in in a way but essentially what it means is we need to build an organization around our customers right we have to work as a startup i mean you mentioned you alluded mm -hmm. to, to the point of uh, uh you know uh, behaving like a startup the the problem with large organizations is when they be become big i mean we we see those silos you know uh, the loose sight of what what they set out to do in the correct. first place correct and being design driven it folk it it actually compels you it focuses you on being very close to your customer right and what large organizations actually need, need to do is they need to work like a startup because again when we talk about all of these disruptive innovation happening where is it coming from is it coming from the large organizations it's coming from the digital you know disruptors those those uh those uh this any person anywhere in the world could disrupt anyone right i mean we have so many examples i mean airbnb disrupted the entire hospitality industry and uh, i mean we've got several examples i mean we've, we've got uber we've got you know uh, uh the fintechs right now i mean what they're doing to these large banking corporations mm. uh so the idea is to to become nimble to become agile mm. to stay focused on your customer and that can only happen if you have a culture which which cherishes experimentation which which really focuses you on gaining those those great actual insights from your customers by being close to your customers um 
I'm going to give you another example of uh, another CEO, uh, I mean, former CEO of uh, P&G. His name was Alan uh, G. Laffley. What he used to do was, he was the global CEO of P&G, Procter & Gamble, right? This large behemoth. But what he used to do when he was uh, traveling different countries was the first thing that he would do was he would call up the, the, the country general manager of that particular country. Let's say if he was traveling to PNG Indonesia or PNG Brazil. The first thing that he would do it was he would go and take a trip to a retail store or a supermarket. I believe it is the same principle that Studio 77 is also operating on, which is bringing people from diverse backgrounds, Absolutely. from diverse fields and then you know, making them solve problems of our clients, you yeah. know. hundred um, percent. So for me, a design driven uh, organization, I can put it like a formula. Hmm. So the design driven, uh, design driven organization is like people plus places plus processes and plus practices. So these four P's are super important if any company has to you know, build a design driven culture or a customer centric culture. So the first P is all about people. So you mentioned about, you know, the Studio 77 being a differentiator. It's a differentiator in all of these four aspects. So the first one is the people. So here in the company, we've got like 45 designers. Uh, uh, I mean, they, they are UX researchers, they are uh, design strategists, they are uh, UX designers, they are uh, front end developers. So some of these roles are absolutely unique to the company. You know, and it's, it's, it's taken a lot of investment, time and effort to, you know, get this team up and running. Yeah. Um, so, so you need those different people, people with different mindsets because the, the essence of a because design. Because you need people to challenge you as well exact, at the end of the day. And, yeah. by, and by virtue of following the, this design thinking process, you invariably do that, right? Yeah. I mean, our design strategists, they are those people who conceive new experiences, who conceive new product innovations who conceive, you know, innovation in, in any context, in any uh, organization, they have to focus on three, you know, three parameters, as I call it. One, they need to know business strategy. The second is they need to know technology. And the third thing, which is the most important piece is they have to know design and what it can yeah. do and bring in, bring to the, to the organization. And the, the union of these three circles is where the real transformation or the real experience magic transformation, happens where the real magic happens yeah. so that's the first p which is the the people the second yeah. p is the places which you talked uh, spoke about our studio is purposely built uh companies around the world are building design studios they're, they're building innovation labs because the idea is that this is going to be the catalyst uh which is going to create the change in the organization um, the change because you have to give that people the kind of environment to be able to you know conceive new ideas exactly so the idea is not that innovation is this is going to happen in the studio the idea yeah. is that it's going to infiltrate into the larger organization yeah. and that's that's where the companies are investing uh, investing upon uh, you go to PNG you go to Unilever uh, office they're all investing in creativity they're all in, investing in building innovation in creative spaces right now that you can you know really understand what what the customers are, are thinking the third p is the processes so mm. if you want to foster innovation in, in the company you need to ensure that you you have the right processes in place so you need to you know ensure that if i have an idea about let's say systems limited right now i should be able to you know give that idea across to the higher ups so companies are investing in these innovation friendly processes right now and the last p uh, is the practices which is the absolute you know core of any in transformation which is the practices are the most important bits so it's how the day starts and how the day ends in the office hmm. is the is is uh, are those 8 hours enabling our resources to think different are those 8 hours you know uh, enabling our our designers or our strategists to move beyond what what's happening right now to collaborate with other people to collaborate with uh, interdisciplinary uh, or other functions so that's the most important piece practices and companies like google have have come up with you know design uh, sprints you might yeah. uh, again it's like a uh, google's way of you know design thinking uh, they've made their own versions of design thinking uh, they call it design sprints again uh, it's those small, small things that happen. It's how the work is done 
how we approach problems, how we approach our clients' problems and their challenges. That is the most important bit, which is focused on, you know, practices. So um, just from the top of your mind, any top three clients that you've thoroughly enjoyed working for at Systems? Oh, uh, uh, we've worked with, you know, hundreds of customers. Um, uh, but uh, uh, I mean, we've worked uh, for uh, our systems entities across the globe, uh, VSI. Uh, we worked with a healthcare uh, company. Uh, they were embarking on a digital transformation journey um, and they wanted us to help them in the technology bit. We said, no, 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 I mean, we need, we need to do it a bit differently. So we sold them the idea of, of having an envisioning session. We are working with clients in the Middle East right now. Uh, we are working with clients in, in the US, uh, in Europe uh, right now. Pakistan is, is, our, uh, is our home turf. Um, again, as you know, I mean, systems is expanding globally. Um, we are in the process of, of uh, signing something in the APAC region as well. So we've got a, a whole disparate things we, we, coming Yeah, up. we've got a whole disparate, uh, uh, you know, uh, types of clients. And it's, it's always a, a great thing to work with all sorts of different clients, you know. Uh, not everyone is, is going to agree with what you're, what you're saying, but that's the challenge that, you, yeah. that, we, uh, that we need to take on. Because again, our work involves a lot of, uh, you know, teaching and creating awareness and inculcating what could be the art of possible if you do things a bit differently, yeah. you know. Thank you, Babur. Thank you for joining us. It has been a very, very insightful conversation. I'm My sure pleasure. our audience will go back looking at those case studies yeah. and, you know, you've given them a lot of material to study, understand design thinking in a better manner. Thank you to our audience for tuning in. Uh, we will come back with another exciting episode, bringing another industry leader from our team who will deep dive into a topic that you would want to know about. Thank you so much. Thank you.